we're all 3D labs up in Weatherby. Now, they've had a huge investment. They're a brand new company. They're a 3D, or a 3D printing bureau. Lee, you're from Matsura. Why would they use you guys, HP, and Dimension? Well, Matsura, as you know, has been a long time in the marketplace, uh, well known for their machinery, but also recently, well, I say recently, over the last few years, have developed a relationship um, reselling for the HP and the Dimension brands. Again, high quality bits of equipment. It's why Mark has looked at that as his investment that he wants to, to go forward with. Yeah, there's a lot of products out there, so it's, and it's a big commitment, so he's chosen you guys. That, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's, it's all about the quality, but again, as mentioned, it's about the service as well. It's not, you can buy a product, we can all go out and buy something, but if you're not going to get the support and the aftercare afterwards, then that's, that's, a, big, that's a big thing. And off Karen Mark said he's been, you know, he's been second tonight, he's had a few issues, which we'd expect. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, like you say, we're all human. There's, there's teething issues to be had, but we've been on it. If he calls us, we're there. And if the, as I mentioned, if there's mater material there, if he, if he was not finding that was correct, we'll, we'll get that shipped next day, and it was there. Absolutely. What I want to do, though, is look at the actual process, because there's a number of different processes here, which course, is yeah. all really interesting. Yeah. Because there's different styles of 3D printing. So yeah. what is it, and what is this is the first stage? This is the first stage. This, this is uh, class as the, this is the build unit. Um, normally what we do is they have two build units that's, that's supplied, so you'd have one in the post-process station, one in the printer. We'll go through that a little bit more. But this is the first process. The, now, this, this build unit is what uh, goes into initially into the post-process station, and that's filled with a powder. Uh, nylon based uh, in, in what Mark's using he's using a PA, PA 12 uh, there's different nylon. styles of there is different styles yeah you've got PA 11 PA 12 TPU and PP um, but PA 12 is, is what Mark's chosen for uh, for the, generally the work that he's doing okay yeah. so fill it up then let's go and look at the next stage of the yeah, process okay Lee next stage of the process yeah this is the HP 5200 printer this is yes as you say it's the next stage in the process so once you've had it in the post-processing station, the build unit, and you've filled it full of the powder, it's an easy process, nice and clean. All the powder's contained within the build unit. You take the build unit from the post-processing station, and you bring it to here, and it just basically slides in. Nice it's and simple. Paper. Nice and simple. What nice about simple. the working envelope? The working envelope is uh, 380 by 284 by 318 in height. Can we have a quick look inside? Yeah, of course, yeah. So essentially everything's being printed in there. I mean, that's... Yeah, wow. that's, that's correct, yeah. So the, yeah, what you can see here is, 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 is the powder, uh, the powder that uh, lays down uh, layer by layer. Um, that's the, the PA12 powder, as mentioned earlier, yeah. And what's the benefit of this? Because there's different types of 3D printing. What's the benefit of this style? It's, uh, it's a rigid material. There's no support, so it's self-supporting because it, the parts actually lie within the bed of the powder when, once, it's been, once it's been printed. So uh, a big plus there is not having any support removal uh, to do afterwards. Uh, as well as that, it's uh, isotropic. So uh, some forms of printing can be quite weak in the Z because of the process it's done. This, this keeps the rigidity right through the, the process. A uniform sort of type of uh, build is, is, is what you're gaining here from this sort of binder jet technology. Okay, and how is it, I mean, I've, I've got a design in my brain, right? I, I, what do I do? I send a, send a picture through to Mark? At the, at yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really straightforward, easy process. Uh, yeah, you, you send the STL model to, to, to someone like Mark, and, and th they will put that into, into some of the software that I have. Now, the software can be really intelligent, so it could be a number of parts that you could get within that. So it doesn't have to be one part within the build. You could have a series of parts, and the software is very intelligent in form of basically nests the parts in order so and it will tell you how many parts you can you can fundamentally get out of that build as well so depending so on the size i could have 500 really small parts all different as well yeah absolutely yeah it's yeah if you've got an assembly of parts it's it's a perfect way to to, to look at uh, producing those all in all in one one go really okay so i've loaded load up my build yeah. unit the build unit that's right yeah press a button it's printing away yeah application specific for how long it's going to take yeah, I mean, you, you can do a full build, you can do half builds, you don't necessarily have to do, uh, it's, it's about setting, but it's a really easy system. It's just like uh, having a uh, normal HP printer at home. It's, it's a very intuitive system, so you don't have to be sort of somewhat expert, let's put it that way, to use it. If you follow the step-by-step -step process on here, 
you get it printing very, very quickly. Nice and simple. So yeah. I'll print it all off, back to the machine we were printing. That's correct. Once, once it's done, probably around, say, nine hours for a full build, nine to ten hours, you would then remove it. So again, like this, taking the build unit out, back over to the post Back we go then. Back at the post processing station. That's what correct. Happens? So now what you what you would do is put the build unit back in here. Now it does need a process to cool that because it gets up to a, a temperature about 160 degrees while it's printing. So that powder is extremely hot when it comes out. So what you would do is you bring that build unit back into here and you'd allow that to cool. Now the cooling process, naturally cooling process, is about the same time as it takes to print. So hence the reason normally our customers will have at least two build units. So you've got one in print while one is, one is sort of cooling. Now, once it's cooled, uh, that's when you can start unpacking the build. So the, the opponent's taking powder. Now you've got this sort of vacuum here, which will remove the majority of the powder. Out so when of you that. say unpacking, you're just hoovering, essentially? Yeah, you're just hoovering it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in simple terms, yeah, you're hoovering that powder out. Then as you're hoovering the powder out, you'll remove the components that, that are self-supported inside there. And you'll just get off most of the remnant powder off those parts. Put them to the put them to the side. So it's a very it's a very easy process for that, and it's it's all vacuumed at the back as well. So it's 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 good. You don't need to wear particularly wear as a spot. Probably want to wear gloves, something along those lines. For health and but safety. For health and safety. But it's because of these screens and that it's vacuumed a lot of the powder back as well. And then you've got your product. Yeah. You want to you've got a finished process. There's a number of different options. Let's go and have a look at the first one. Okay. They, I've got my final printed part, but essentially the final clean here. That, that's correct, yeah. W you'll get most of the powder off at the post process station, but you then need to clean the part off a bit, bit more finer. So you've got this PowerShot C from Dimension here. Uh, there's two processes, there's a manual way to blast the parts, or there's an automated way. It's like a bit like a washing machine drum. So you place your parts inside there, it'll revolve and it'll find the fine medium at the part to clean off all of the, all of the uh, remnant powder on that part, as you can see down here. Uh, you can see, yeah, that's sort of the, the, typically how fine that how fine that is, and then ultimately that is then the finished uh, the finished product after it's been cleaned. Okay, that's a finished product, but I have other options as well. So it seems opportune we go and see the PowerShot S. That's correct. Yeah, PowerShot S, and you can actually see the manual option here. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, the the, the door will come down and allow you to get your hands in to do a manual process as well. But for the larger parts. For, for larger parts, yeah, that will, wouldn't fit inside the drum. It's a very similar process to the C, a drum revolves, but it's got a bit of a, a larger sort of a half mil sort of plastic plastic bead that you can see see there that's blasted the part to give it a, a, a sort of polished finish. You can see here. So matte finish, but also you printed a revolving wheel in there as well. That's correct. That's the beauty about the designing for additive is, uh, and, and the way the HP works is that you can do things within the powder because it's all self-supported. As long as that powder can come out at the end of it, you can put parts, working functional parts together. We're not talking prototyping, we're talking end-user parts as well here. Okay, great examples there, but we've got one final option. Let's go and have a look at that. Lee, if I want that different surface finish, this is a completely different process. What's going on here? Yeah, this is, this is a, a vapor fusing technology. So it's sort of chemically smoothing. So it's like a, a, a benzyl alcohol, basically, to, to uh, give a highly sort of polished look uh, of, of the part there. Very similar to sort of more injection, injection mold-like qualities. Uh, you, you, you can't tell uh, that that would be 3D printing, the difference between the two at that point. So th this process gives the overall a really nice sh shine finish there but it also completely watertights the, the part as well so for industries maybe like the marine where things are being submerged in water it's an ideal sort of uh, solution for those uh, to finish off those 3d printed parts great example of one part let's just finally see a couple of other parts that they printed at all 3d labs okay these some great examples of components Absolutely. obviously 3d printed talk me through what's going on with each Okay, well, this is a, a typical example again of what you can do with H, H, HP printing. This has been printed all in one in one go. But you can see it's got move, movable part within within another part, and that's just been printed direct, direct, not having to put any any emphasis on putting the part together afterwards. Okay, another great example of why would three D print is this? Because yeah, I'm not going to call it. It's not honeycomb as such, but yeah, it's a, a large structure. Yeah, so, uh, so far, but. 
what this gives you is design for additive. Uh, now, the design for additive gives you endless possibilities. Um, they're a, a lightweight in the structure, but keeping, keeping also the, uh, the, the strength in the part as well. And that's what people are looking for now, more light, lightweight, but not uh, the, hard, the, the strength of the part coming uh, compromised. OK, but you say that we've got this part here, which does actually have some flexibility within it. It's a different material. Uh, actually, this is uh, this is actually the same material. It's just it's just been how it's been uh, designed in, in in the way the strength of the pipe. So we, it can still give you some flexibility if needed in that as well. So you've you've got the rigid when you need it, but you can also get flexibility when needed as well. It's all about the design. There you go, Lee. A great showcase of what you've done, helping all 3D labs put all this together and come up with some absolutely fantastic product. Thank you very much. Thank you.